like that. We have not been anywhere with this abundance of wildlife as this place right here. early start today. Today is all about finding wildlife in the jungle. We got boat rides, hikes, more boat rides to get to Sandoval Lake. Apparently it is a great spot to find all sorts of animals. Let's go. Bloody wind's a bit cold. Right, we just need to go to a checkpoint. I think it's like a controlling who's going in and out of the jungle to protect animals and stuff like that. I am glad I'm on this boardwalk. There are way too many spiders down there in burrows. And you can see them all as well, they're right by the entrance. Wow, that's a bird eating spider, guys. They're the ones that live with a little frog, and the little frog protects the nest from little ants, and the tarantula protects the frog from all sorts of predators, snakes, and all sorts. And they both work together, and it's so cool. Yeah, the, our guide got bitten by one. He's got two big fang marks on his on his on his hand. They won't bite you unless you do sudden movements. And that's what he did. He said he got bitten by a horsefly. He slapped the horsefly, and then the, the tarantula bit his hand while he was holding it. He said it was the worst pain. They're huge. They've got one inch long fangs, and they can easily bite through your shoe. Mad so cool such an impressive creature never seen one in the wild like that before that was amazing we've only just got it we're not even at the lake yet this is their picture guys pick f-i-g five feet same roots in front and the old roots die off so it walks it walks one meter oh. seven feet. Better take picture before run away. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this one, it was here two years ago. It was right here. All now right. look at how it's moving now. Yeah. You see? See, see these things. roots. See these roots. This, this tree walks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Here in the lowland forest, other trees grow taller, block the canopy, mm -hmm. and they need to move. Looking for sunlight. Yeah. They don't. Uh, we, it's, we cut the roots. We use as a greater. It grows new roots out towards the direction it wants to go. Takes off, cuts off the old ones, kills off the old ones, and then um, just makes its way along the ground. How mad's that? They they move one meter, 30, 30 centimeters a year. Mad. It's the only tree in the world that moves, apparently. It's uh, the inspiration for the Ents in uh, Lord of the Rings. What, what, what lizard is it? Tree runner. A tree runner. Running up and down the tree trunk. Yeah. Insects and bullet ants. Makes sense. Eats the bullet ants. Yeah. You know, bullet ants is the biggest and the most dangerous ant on earth. On Earth, oh, yeah. really, and they're here, they're obviously, here on the trees. And there's a crazy British guy with a German guy yeah. traveling around the world, testing who has the most painful thing on Earth. 
they, they, they did it on purpose, and they said, ah, oh, bullet time. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that because many times it's time by bullet time. <laughs> <laughs> Jaguars, of course. It's some millions, some millions. Soldier, this is a soldier. I do a scientific okay. investigation with one Japanese guy about this ant. Really? Yeah, long time ago. Fangs are massive. Yeah, sharp fangs. It's crazy. Yeah. Look at the little eyes. You see the little black dot? This is our our cleaner as well. In the wet season, this one's go into the house, I'm eating cockroaches, spider, everything. Mm. Okay. Now we've got to jump on one of these canoes and head out to the lake, so we can see there. I suppose it's named that because it eats snakes. They eat fish. They eat fish. Why is it called a snake bird? It moves their head like a snake. Ah, oh, it moves its head like a snake. Look, it does move its head like a snake. That's so weird. So the locals here actually use these snake birds for fishing. They domesticate the bird, put a little ring around his neck so he can't swallow the fish. And when he catches them, they just take the fish and then they, they take them home and eat them. They must reward the bird in some way, I would have thought. <laughs> I would like to think so. Pretty bad. Humans, eh? <laughs> Too smart for our own good. So we're now searching for the river otter, the giant river otter. They are two meters long. That's crazy. I, I didn't think they were that big. Um, yeah, there used to be loads in these parts, but since the pandemic, when they, uh, when all the authorities and that were either off work or making sure people were sitting in their homes, all the hunters and stuff were out here fishing and taking all their food and hunting them and. Yeah, it's been very hard to find them ever since. Yeah, they're, they're pretty crazy creatures. They're the apex predators as well. They'll kill caimans, anacondas, anything. Got the brains, haven't they? And if they're two meters long, they must be so strong. <sighs> Sucks really that they're not here now. He said it's very hard to see it, find them now, ever since the pandemic. Oh, it's a prehistoric bird. This is apparently a prehistoric bird. There's two of them there. Oh. Wow. Wow. They look so cool. They have a scale on their face like a snake. They eat leaves and flowers to avoid confrontation with other species for the berries, bugs and fish. And because of their diet being only leaves and flowers, they can only fly up to 100 meters, and when they land, they crash. They're losing their ability to fly. It's crazy. It just shows up what, what, how important diet is. The ocelot and the boa constrictor are the main predator of these birds. So when these birds are chicks, they have, the, they have hooks on their elbows. And what happens is when, when a predator comes in to eat them, they hop off the nest into the water, and they climb back up the tree on their hooks on their on their wings, on their shoulders, like a dragon. It's pretty crazy. Wow, they're awesome. The call is funny. What area? That, that where the palm trees are. Oh, okay. So you see, there's palm trees all the way around to there. But then there's no palm trees here. That's because of the tapir. It's an animal of about 200 kilos in weight. They're quite rare to see, aren't they? And they yeah. walk around. Right. And as they eat, when they go for a shit, 
they shit out all the seeds wow. and they create they basically create their own forest so that's wow. why there's loads of palm trees over in the area because the tapir has been going around shitting everywhere sending seeds all over the place <laughs> that's mad <laughs> it's like half of this lake is surrounded by palm trees because of one animal that's mad isn't it yeah do you see guys yeah there are many capuchin monkey the big brown one capuchin monkey Cappuccino monkey. Yeah, cappuccino. <laughs> yeah, you see one is walking in the branch. Mono machin, mono machin. Dude, how are you seeing these? My eyes are so bad. Yes, above the water, guys. They make a lot of noise. We can hear them oh, from across flying. the lake. Oh, no, they're there are many, many uh, squirrel monkeys. Little yellowish monkeys are a squirrel, and brown ones, capuchin monkeys. Oh, the yellow ones, you see the yellow ones? No. On the leaf, right there. Next to the. Capucci monkey here on the right hand side. On the right hand side. I see the capucci. No, no, here on the right hand side of the capucci. Oh yeah. Monkey. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah. I see. Oh, they're both small. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. They are everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> Shit, there's wow. loads of monkeys. Capucci monkey is the most intelligent monkey in the are whole they? Americans. The capucci monkey. Yeah. Oh, I've seen these. I've seen these yeah, on the uh, David America, Attenborough. Central and South America. Central. The squirrel monkeys live in troops of up to one to two hundred monkeys. And the capuchin monkey lives in groups of about 10 to 15 monkeys. And the reason they chill together is because they help each other out. So the capuchin monkeys are bigger, so they look after the squirrel monkeys and make sure they're protected. And in return, the squirrel monkeys, because there's so many of them, they can scan all levels of the forest and easily find food. And the capuchin monkeys then eat. They've got more eyes on the ground, basically. So cool. It's just like the, the frog and the, the spider, how different, spe different um, species try and work together to make life easier. It's pretty cool. Traveling places in low season. Yeah. Yes, mango, the, the, look at that. Oh, yeah. The mango is in the middle. In the center. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> 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 no one noticed that. Yeah. Oh, wow, you see this tree's coming out of the roof of this house. The house has been built around it. Wow, it's a mango tree. It's yeah, it's colorful. Apparently, these lodges, the people who lived here before this was a protected area, are still allowed to hunt here for themselves, but they're not allowed to hunt for tourists. But anybody else who moves in from now is not allowed to hunt here for themselves and they'll have to use conventional ways to get food. But the people who were settled here before the rules came in that this was a protected area and you can't hunt, they're still allowed to hunt because they lived here before, before the rules came in. Listen to that. Sands of the jungle, man. Got this avocado tree here. A uh, cashew nut tree. So this is actually usually tourists in this area, but because it's low season at the moment, it's completely dead. Check this out as well. Look at this. What is this? Look at this old car. Yeah. Oh, they've got bananas as well and oranges. Wow. Yeah, they've got all sorts of stuff here. Growing all their own food, self sustainable. It's the way to go. It's the future, I think. Look at this. I wonder how old that is. Still got the windows. But how, how did the car even get here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't want to drop from the sky. <laughs> yeah. It was, a, it was a wider path it used to come from uh, the other side of the city that way. Okay. By ferry, it used to cross over Tambopata River. No matter if it's here, but they cross Tambopata River by ferry, and there was a wider path coming to this. Ah, 
So I drove here back when there was a path. Yeah, that was at least, at least uh, 70 years ago. 70 years ago? Uh -huh. 60 years ago, I think. Rubber boom was huge in this area. Rubber? Rubber boom. Right. Rubber trees. Taucho. Oh, yeah. Taucho. Sick. Beautiful, eh? Have you seen the bananas, buddy? Mm. No, I didn't see the bananas. Oh, yeah. Plantain and bananas. Wow. They're all banana trees. Oh, okay. So, uh, so, so bananas are not. We say banana tree, yeah, but that's really a grass. Yeah. Like um, uh, sugar, cane. sugar cane, corn, corn, bamboo, bamboo, rice, rice. Yeah. They're all they're all a grass they're in the grass family. And b bananas are the, in the same family. Yes, yes. Never knew that. I've always thought of it as a tree, but now you mention it, it is kind of like a big bit of grass. Yeah. It's not, so yeah, it's like a stem, a soft stem, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. It's like giant grass. So when we're eating bananas, we're eating giant grass seeds. What are they? Oranges. oranges. Really? But they're green. Greenages. Big oranges, but not oranges yet. No. Right, you're going to have to bear with this footage because we've just shot this through the binoculars. But they're red howler monkeys. They're the loudest land mammal on earth. Okay, the males have the sack under their chin and they inflate that with air and it creates a really loud noise when they uh, expel the air. Okay. Loudest land mammal on earth. Crazy is that. We've got a little baby up there. Harpy eagles are the predators for their monkeys. Oh really? Yeah. Jesus. And the, har the harpy eagle is their top predator. And it can carry away 10 kilos of monkey. <laughs> oh, a harpy eagle. Now that would be something cool to see. Basically, there's wildlife all over the place here. This is the most wildlife rich place we've been to. As a, as a jungle. Sri Lanka had a lot of wildlife as well. Just throughout the whole country. But as an actual place. A concentrated area. Crazy amount of wildlife here. And we've, we've only been here for a few hours and seen a tiny little bit. Imagine when you go deeper. That's what we want to do, a trip, trip later on in the year. Come back here and go deep into the jungle with um, Leo, the guide. He's so good. He knows everything about it. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> now, something bit my head. Did it? Oh, <sighs> now that stings like shit. That'll probably be on the camera, whatever that is. Now, oh, this thing's like a mother. Is it a bee? Don't know what it was. It didn't even make a noise. <laughs> yeah, come back. Fuck that. I ain't come back to the jungle. <laughs> yes, as I was saying, we're thinking of coming back later in the year, maybe around September. We'll just do like a four day, uh, four night trek into the Amazon jungle with Leo. Um, and he said he'll take us like fishing, we'll do like some survival stuff so we live off the land and um, go and look for jaguars and caimans and tapirs and loads of loads of animals in the Amazon. He said if, the deeper we go the better it is so yeah I think we're going to do that a bit later on in the year, maybe September time, come back. Well that's it from us, we're going to be um, going to the parakeets uh, clay, clay wall licking tomorrow. The, um, They'll go to the clay to lick and they eat that. They get the minerals from there. Uh, we're going to go and see that tomorrow morning and then we're catching a flight to the next spot in Peru. So I'll leave some shots of the um, clay wall here so you can see what it looks like, what sort of thing it is. It's, uh, what does it cost us? 100 dollars each? Uh, yeah, or 90. 120? 120. I can't remember how much it was now, but I'll put it on the screen anyway. Goodbye.